I V M. कृपया ध्यान दीजिए द लैंग्वेज यूज ऑन द पॉडकास्ट मे नॉट बी फिट फॉर कंजम्पन वी वॉन्ट यू ट्रेड केयरफुली बट लिसन यार डोंट बी सो कंजर्वेटिव Okay, we're deep in it now, folks. We're deep in the last week of the year, whether we like it or not. This is where we are. This is the time for you to reflect, look back at your horrible life, and think about what went wrong. It starts with the small things, like did you find parking for your car twice in the year at least, and it goes to the other things uh, like resolutions that you made. I aimed very low last year. One of my resolutions was that I have to stop being so nice. I felt I've been too beautiful and pure a human being, and it's about time I break that down and become more abrasive and mean spirited. I feel I accomplished this by Jan second itself. I didn't have to go very far into the year, so I'm quite proud of what I've done. Now we're going to turn the focus on the other two gentlemen in the show because at the last week of the year, you sort of have like a scorecard of your thoughts. You introspect and you look at what you've done or not done, what you wanted to do or couldn't do. All these things are laid out threadbare. I think Silvery is going to be very honest because he's got some huge, huge confessions to make on this show. So I would not miss this show. I just would not. I mean, you don't need to be taking uh, potential narcotics to get through this show. Generally, you should. But but for this particular show, it'll be fine, just the way you are. Are you looking for finance products and services that can enhance your personal finance experience? Are you looking for a space to talk about your financial product or service? And are you looking for a crisp talk show where the conversation is all about money? Well, your search ends here. Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta and I'm host of the Paisa Paisa podcast and I invite you for the conversation about your personal finance on each Monday on the IVM podcast app or the website or on any podcast streaming platforms. See you folks. Let's welcome Amit Doshi who was missing uh, here and there and Silvery who's got lots to share with us because the young have lots to say their voices are louder and there's more angst and pain and stress and strife Silvery open your heart yes. young man take off your shirt yeah, yeah. show us everything um let's begin with the fact that this really is the last week of the year and i i feel a lot of people feel guilty because this week and the week that comes next year uh, uh, literally are the two weeks where the reflecting happens but in between you know it's a bit like how we used to do the aids awareness program in mtv on december 1st became a huge deal for us and for five or six years we had lots of fanfare and pomp and did a lot of work around it media activity events and by december 2nd it was dead till the next december 1st you know which i always used to talk about we shouldn't be doing things through the year instead of just having this one big day like a birthday so Here we come to the classic case of all of us, not just Indians, everywhere around the world. People sort of really, I do think there's a sincere effort to look at yourself, look in words, look at society, and see what you can do. And then 99% of the time, it comes to naught. So I will stop talking. Silvery, you can take it away. Do you remember what you wanted to do? Like uh, resolution-wise, uh, you mean? Uh... The resolution is a bit of a cliche word, but you know what I mean. There are few yeah. things you you think of, you reflect. Even if it's career, money, uh, family, health, whatever, people have certain things in their head. And this is the point. It's it's like a line in the sand which you have at in the last week of the year or the first week of the year where you sort yeah. of reflect. Uh, I mean, my I'm like the same three, four, four plans that I've had for the last uh, two years. I would say one is release a good stand-up video which hasn't happened yet. Uh, start my Sorry, you had this plan in 2021 Jan. I'm saying or December end of of the year before. No, right? like 2020. 2020. I was like, yeah. uh, when 2020 started, I was like, okay, I will. I'll finally, I'll. I'll. Uh, I'm feeling good so about some of my material. I will start releasing some. We were also in between the two pandemic uh, moments that we had, so it was a good time in a sense. You sort of recovered, so you must have been thinking. We got clamped down again in March. Remember? So yeah. Uh, here's the point. What happened? <laughs> Why didn't you release the video? So I had some spots lined up. and then the pandemic hit right but so i was like i will i i have enough spots lined up i will start uh, recording my sets and all but i started recording and for the first i i did only one recording but the recording didn't talk, come out that well uh, because that's how it goes like some shows you'll just like the same set will destroy and the same set will like just don't do that well but it's a recording you can do 10 times till you get it right you can fine tune it you can edit you can cut paste Absolutely, but then the shows got stopped. Shows can't got cancelled, no, because we don't have any more shows. So, like for like a year and a half, we're just sitting at home. Oh, your point is the motivation to to do the thing is so that you can go on to the live show, and the live show didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Like how else you do make a stand up recording without a live audience? I don't want to release like videos over Zoom, uh, like Zoom videos. Yeah. For 
Oh, if you can get a great reception from a non-audience, can you imagine what you'll do with a live audience? Think about that. <laughs> there are channels like that. It's always a question I've had, though, yeah. right? That I mean, like you know, I, I, I you're right. I, I don't think I've ever seen a stand-up special without an audience. Why is that? I mean, like you know, the, it's a very simple. There is one called uh, Drew Michael. Uh, is a comedian who released a stand-up special literally without an audience. Okay. And uh, it was like, it got a lot of like press at the time because it was very unique. It was, I think in 2018 or something he did it. But I don't think it did that well because not many people know Drew Michael. There is no way, I cannot accept this at all from a scientific point of view. There's no way you can match. The audience doesn't have to give back also. It can just be a normal audience. Whatever, they can yeah. titter or not titter. They can heckle, whatever. But you cannot, the, the whole, the whole, it's like an organism that's taking part in the show. You take that away, yeah. the entire timing goes for a toss. There's a whole different like ball game at play yeah, for, for me it's, I, I, it doesn't make sense for a live event not to have an audience it's just it's when you do a rehearsal you see the difference when you do these rehearsals no one's paying attention you go at about yeah. the speed you're going at is, is about 30 percent less when you're doing the show it's just ridiculous yeah. and with the ad libs and all that come in and the interactions and all that unless you're one of those comics who's in his own bubble and doesn't listen to a word uh, the world is saying around him uh, there are very yeah. few of those left now but i i don't know i, I also i uh, I always think that yeah. there's nothing like the energy of a live room, you know, like a live stand-up show. There's nothing like that energy. The, the, there are two it's, points it's, to the whole dynamic. Like one is the performer and one is the people watching. You can't have, yeah. you have to have both. Otherwise, it's just stupid. One. It's like having a batsman yeah. without a bowler, which is a, how yeah. I had a very high average in school. You know, I mean, if there's no bowler, you can make hundreds and hundreds. It's like that. So it's a, it's a little stupid, actually. And by, by the way, well, but do you, don't you be demotivated. Do you think that this is... If there's no so one I, listening, you, don't you feel a little demotivated? If there's no one listening, what are you going to do? It's a listening, yeah, uh, you're bouncing off them also. So, uh, at this point in my career, I, we, I'm like, I'm literally like not known for stand-up comedy, of course. What are you known for? So, what happens very often, uh, nothing basically right now. Pinching old ladies behind. A little bit behind. for Cyrus says, a little bit for Cyrus says, that's about it. <laughs> that's a horrible cross to bear. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all great. Uh, no, no, but... Uh, so yeah, I'm not really that known. So what very often that what happens at our shows, at, if there's not someone like hugely famous on the lineup who can actually sell tickets, we get like four or five people in the audience. Sometimes we'll get like, we'll, we'll be lucky and we get like 20, 25 people, 30 people also. But very often for like smaller shows, it'll be just four or five people, 10 people, eight people, you know, along those kind of lines. Uh, 15 people is like a, go is like a very good day. But uh, you get used to that. You get used to doing well in like three people rooms also. You get used to doing well in five, 15 people rooms It makes also. more sense if you took a regular job and during the canteen break or whatever, if you just, you know, at the, at the fountain cooler, you stood around and told jokes to your 10 colleagues because you'll have more people listening. I think we should take a regular <laughs> job. Do that in IBM. Just during the breaks, hang out with the guys. The guys, you heard this one about this yeah, man yeah. who went to the bar or whatever. Boom. You're in. Exactly. You told us a joke the other day. What was that joke you just told us in the office on during the sales meeting yesterday? Uh, yeah, okay. It was, uh, uh, I'm really serious about my dating. Uh, I am on six different dating apps, which is actually true. <laughs> I am on six <laughs> different dating apps. And, and the success rate? Of this joke? What is the point of that? You're just hanging. I have... <laughs> okay. Then, we got, so we, got to, we got to go to comedy school together, you and me. <laughs> We've got to brush up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, Amit, by the way, Akash Mehta did a bang on impression of you, huh? Bang off of with me, the American, really? With the eighty percent American accent and everything, and not not oh, one of those caricatures of an American accent. No, it, it yeah. was he sounded like Amit. He had this. It, I I don't even have played played a little later for him, but it, I, I thought I it was will. quite close, quite close. I I will, not, not I will one of those uh, funny yeah. versions, which is a lampoon. Clearly, no, no. This was like an actual. It's like he was a, doing a voiceover uh, of Amit talking like that. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's interesting too. But, but I, uh, Mike, uh, Mike, uh, uh, come back to this like live comedy versus recorded kind of thing, right? Do you think it has to do also with the fact that comedy is a relatively new uh, art form, if you will? I mean, like it's forty years old, stand-up comedy in its current uh, scenarios or uh, current ways. Whereas if you look at like, like you look at how stories were told initially there were plays plays became movies and tv mm -hmm. right yeah. uh music was always live performed and then recording started happening later in this thing do you think that there is something to that do you think that there is an art form to come which is comedy uh, uh so, of some nature which is kind of more recording driven a live yeah, but, you know, in, in a way you already have that with sketches with sketches and stuff that that are out there which don't have laugh tracks so how does but that work? But I'll tell aren't you, that's, they all a... live recordings? Like the 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 YouTube, the, in a, in the a YouTube way. stand up, all of the recordings of live. In a way, right? yeah, yeah, supposedly. So, yeah. But there is non stand up comedy as well, as well, right? Like it's not stand up, but it's still comedy. Again, last catches. But vlogs also exist. 
funny vlogs. One sec, one sec. Those are the news channels. Don't don't get confused because yeah. Yeah, I, I know where you're coming from. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, but no, no, no. I, I think, again, like stand-up requires an audience for that immediate laughter. Uh, because no, that's what he's saying, but basically I, what is happening. He's saying, do you think it'll evolve? It'll evolve into another medium. Or, he, or, or, or a complementary medium or something that can happen as well, right? Where like, you don't uh, need where this vacuum is okay. You still are able to perform. As in as in like, a positive uh, evolvement. The yeah. the John Oliver shows in the pandemic, right? Is yeah. an example. Yeah. He's had zero audience. Yeah, right? correct, correct. I was thinking that. You, yeah, and I mean, like you, you know, I mean, like, is this how something... does this base uh, get affected? I, I don't know. I'm asking you guys are the comics. I think, me. I think you don't. Have, firstly, you don't wait for the laughs. Your punchlines should be faster, like that kind of stuff. You know, because people at home can pause. Exactly. There, you know? I, I give you a sports analogy. When they uh, brought football and cricket back in without audiences, they played this crowd. We discussed it. This crowd noise in the background. So, mm-hmm. like, the ball is going wherever, and the crowd is reacting. But it's a recording of the crowd. I found it hideous. It was really irritating me as a viewer. I, I know it was 80% there, but the 20% of it not being real and spontaneous was enough to make it sound mm-hmm. ridiculous. After the fifth or sixth time, the repetitive factor was the problem. The first or the second time was a normal factor, and you were okay with it. But the sixth or seventh time, it was like, Whoo! they're mixing and matching things. They're killing the, 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 the live feel. So, I guess live in stand-up is the issue. And the live mm-hmm. feel, because you, 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 can't, you can't create the... The permutations and combinations that happen in terms of how the audience is reacting and how it will affect the comic, good and bad. No, no, I hear yeah. that. Sorry, I, I hear that, right? But I mean, like, people say that about the theater too, right? That there's something about acting in the theater. It has its own different kind of thing. But that doesn't mean that there isn't, uh, no, so uh, like, it. you know, this... Kopal uh-huh. did a Hindi play on, on uh-huh. Zoom, uh, uh-huh. which if it was done in a, in a theater, I'm sure would have been decently well-received. But it was right. awfully boring. He showed us the stuff and we were watching it and I had to tell him, man, I can't, it's just, it's, you know, people all on their own Zoom cameras doing their lines, you know, it's like a rehearsal. It right. just didn't have any any power or zest to it and mm. you couldn't really, problem is you can't uh, get connected as a person But watching. was that the story or was that the... No, I think it's format. the medium, the medium, oh, forget the story. The me- uh, He may be saying, uh, you know, my, my dad has AIDS or whatever would be the opening line in Chase India, of course, but uh, it still didn't hook you because I... they, they just... They just seemed a little, you know. So I saw something early. I don't know how this podcast is working. I, we, 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 <laughs> we should be banned. But we're, 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 we're non scripted. See, we're, we're going over each other. No, exactly. So we're okay because we're going over each other. Yeah. The fact is, Anaki makes it interesting enough to listen to. But there, there isn't. So this pause makes it sound really amateur after some time and going back to medieval yeah. theater or whatever. And I can't get involved with an audience. So they don't get involved because they don't get that. Even if it's a, it was serious, it wasn't comedy. I, I saw one thing, right, which was basically uh, a play, which was a Zoom call, right? So basically, the the the, mm-hmm. the kind of it, it was during the pandemic where it was presented as a play, but what was happening was that the play was a Zoom call, right? So I mean, like it was something happening over Zoom, which mm-hmm. I thought kind of worked, right? So I mean, like so I you, think that that's... you have that one idea which is sort of mirroring the whole point. Yeah. So other than that, where do you where's your second? Now the sequel is what? Uh, after yeah. that, it's almost impossible. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll tell you the longevity was the issue. So what you I always say. Yeah. So what I always say is that uh, any stand-up video that you watch, right, like be it special, be it a YouTube video, anything that is stand-up is basically trying to capture the energy that was in that room in that moment. Okay. So like what you see is basically a watered down version of that energy that was in that, in that room. Uh, so I don't I, think. But does that limit the art form? Does that limit but the does, art form? Does that limit I, the art form? I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a limiting factor. I think that's the advantage of the art, for, art form but for, is that. I'll put it the other way around. Uh, that immediate thing is the is the for main me, selling point of the art form that it's alive uh, if you reverse form. it a little bit for me both as a performer and a watcher i enjoy the fact that you're going to now critique what happened there for example you go out of into the fourth dimension and come back to the show sort of thing so the audience has not enjoyed that joke and you go off and you have a discussion over that which sometimes is far funnier and lends itself to far more reality sort of funny as against yeah. the you know whatever is happening and all those things are, are the fun part of performing that's when you do events and stuff you don't realize how you depend on the room suddenly you're, you've got a script but no one can hear anything you're saying and you're reading of their names or whatever but it's just like a roll call it's a huge difference yeah god if they take out the audience you're asking me i i don't know i i think the game is the abandoned as far as i'm concerned beyond a point it's just a lecture it can't be the same thing right it has to have an evolution in some nature right i mean like yeah. plays are plays movies are movies right i mean like there is a difference right live music is live music studio design music is studio design music right there is a difference between the two things Right. And uh, so, I mean, like this, this, I, I, all of this was like when I started, it all does come from the John Wall, uh, John Oliver thing. Right. I'm like, huh, this is interesting. Yeah. He doesn't have an audience. I think his show is better without an audience. 
right uh, oh okay yeah and it is same with daily show same with all those guys right but so some of them had like you it's know just small like a, because his is like an extended monologue which uh-huh. is from start to finish like an extended monologue so yeah. in a sense he's yeah. just talking and you're just listening if you leave it at but, that so it's a passive performance by the audience i'll allow that for some extent but give me the chance to be in the theater and then in the middle of his monologue we have moments awkward or, or better or nice or whatever i think those moments are the most fun uh, for both like, for think- and Patriot Performing. Act, right? The Hasan Minhaj show. I think it would be, yeah. so, it would have been better without an audience. Same stuff. Because again, this is coming to That's me it. from the John Oliver thing. I love the Hasan Minhaj audience stuff that he does afterwards yeah. that comes on YouTube, right? Yeah. That shit's really yeah. funny. But the actual thirty minutes that he is doing around these different subjects, right? It's also made in a way where you don't need the audience, in a sense. You don't. Back. Because you're cutting right, so so many it, different things. It's all the visual. But I mean, like, is that is that is, is the addition of audio visual within a no? But if you're doing touch, that, so now now you're on the right track. I'm saying if you go with that Hasan Minhaj style and you're doing all this stuff that's that's happening, yeah. this collage of colors and all that happen, and these cutaways to different things, emphasizing a point, you don't really need because the audience at home can is enough, I guess. Yeah. But again, it's just like an extended monologue. It's one guy talking. What he does, Silvery, and most of the stand up. Mm, you know, if you look at the, the the biggest ones in the business, uh, Louis C.K. If he's allowed, Bill Burr, all of them. I mean, they need their audience. They need their audience. They always riff. I get that. I'm just asking: Is there a way for this stuff to move ahead, uh, or right. move into a slightly? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, but Silvery doesn't I, have the answer to that. He spent one year not doing a stand up, not yeah, recording also, anything, giving up after one recording when he could have done at least two. Uh, all this is my way of telling Antariksh: Don't wait for two years to do shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah Antariksh, that. that, that's ridiculous that you waited actually, because ultimately you think of the fact that the recording is the one thing that you could do yeah. during the pandemic. The recording is the no, one thing. Oh, no, you could. How did one? But how do you didn't even have a? We didn't have live shows happening. How could you? Yeah, do no, think of that's part you two. Can do but you could that, record right? yourself and and put out a little bit, just like a little trailer of what you would be doing album wise or whatever you want to call it. That you could have done, and you didn't do that because you're saying I don't have the second half of it, so I have no motivation because they aren't letting me go on stage. So I understand yeah, that, I but I'm just saying that you could have still put together little snippets and all that and said, you know, this yeah. year this is what I've been doing, waiting for my audience. Yeah, yeah, like I had planned to do a lot more, man. I had planned to like when uh, reel started, right, uh, and everyone started posting. Like is it, endless reels and reel sketches. I was like, okay, I need to do this. I tried a couple is, of times. I was like, no, is man, this the, is not me. Is it the weed? Is is that the problem? <laughs> is that the problem? <laughs> no, it's a lot of things. I just, no, no, I, I I think he follows a long tradition over there. I don't think that's the issue at all. There, there, there's or secondly, a, he got comedian thing. <laughs> he got entrenched in the podcast and he works his ass off because he really loves his job and that is the first priority and paramount for him. He wakes up and the sincerity and effort he puts in that takes away from the ability to do anything extracurricular. I I I respect. Yeah, let's show. Let's, let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> he mentioned to you that reviews are happening right now, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. did. No, yeah. <laughs> appraisals, we used to call them. We used to call them. I don't know. I love I love the concept of appraisals back in the old MTV days where they would take everybody to Goa or one of these places. And then we'd have a weekend of seminars and all that and drink all night. It was it was hilarious because nobody would give you any bad news for you those two days. You did appraisals in that? Yeah, they did. We used to have... Uh, this is where I remember Nikhil Chinnapa's laundry bill coming up. Uh, because he was sitting there and then we were arguing about production bills and all that. that. Yeah, yeah, and somebody put up and said, you know, he's a five-star hotel, the socks are 160 rupees. And this is 1999-2000. Huh? You can imagine. So he gave a long list of bills. And I, of course, for the other end of the spectrum. Nothing. <laughs> 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 Never heard of laundry. Yeah. All right, Amit, what about you? You haven't mentioned your me? 2000. And, yeah. Well, no, I, so, I mean, like, uh, I don't really do, uh, like, you know, the um, uh, New Year thing. I, I, and again, I've been kind of anti it for, like, a while. It's, uh, you know, it's you don't a do random it publicly, day. but don't you do something inside? No, not think really, that? because it, it, I really do think, right, it's very arbitrary for us to pick new year's as the day when this all happens right why are uh, why why does the year switch on the winter solstice instead of the uh, summer solstice why is the equinox not given any kind of uh, uh, importance in our correct calendars right I, the, the, I, i'm sorry but this shit always goes I, through my head so i just can't get that that your issues are all geographical I mean, the rest of the world is collapsing. You know what I mean? Everybody's going to like die. He's talking about his career, for God's sake. And yours are geographical. It's it, it's the thing that I'm trying to... It was actually some of... Uh, it's this, right? I mean, like, my thinking around this stuff is you don't wait for a special day to do whatever, right? You want to mm. go lose weight, work on losing weight right then and there. Obviously, I'm not doing well with that, but you work on <laughs> losing weight right then and there, right? Yeah. You want to get more exercise. Why are you waiting for New Year's to come around for that, right? You want to eat better? Or why are you waiting for New Year's to come around? Yeah, the that? moment you put, That's you true. stall for yeah. three more days for the ceremonial uh, date, you just say, 
self inducing hypnosis of some kind yeah, yeah. so it's so i mean like you know i i just i don't uh, i i feel like what you want to do you should do at the time when it's time to do it why are you waiting on some special i, I also i mean like honestly birthdays right i mean like in some way it, you wish people happy birthday and stuff like that but i feel the same way like about that right it's a, it's an yeah. arbitrary date spoke uh, created through essentially dividing up the natural cycles and having right. that be at a particular point in time i, I just i, I which is an infantile process we've stuff. discussed it and fair enough till the age of 12 please enjoy your bloody birthdays but you're talking about not liking birthdays you're you're good spirited enough to end it there i'm saying end hellos why the hell do you have to keep saying hello to everybody you know i mean i don't understand sometimes i mean i'm so bored i have to lift my head up the guy is saying hello but why why are we having this hello our lives are never going to have intertwined uh, moments of any kind let's just move on i mean i don't not saying be mean but why do you have to say hello hello but you can't you just say hello no i can't say hello i hate it <laughs> deep down i'm dying i'm biting my lip and saying don't say hello in what context do you not want to say hello okay i'm walking on uh, with my dogs in the road minding my own business yeah. one of my neighbors passes and says hello i'm like but we have no relationship why do i have to say hello now i have to look up make eye contact say hello and look back down and go back to my thought look at what right. he's doing to me He's actually being really rude. Now you're just. And then just... if I if I don't say hello, I look like a real prick. You know, yeah, so I have to say hello do. just to avoid my prick licks situation. Yes, you yes. do because I mean, like, dude, this is you live in a society of people. Ah, and, like, you know, that society up your ass, guys. <laughs> What do they ever do for us anyway? There's no relationship. It's all bullshit. I'm not talking about cooperative society. I I. I... I mean the area, the neighborhood. Why do we that, always right? avoid people in the lift? We see someone coming. Why do we rush faster to get in the lift and shut the door? Yeah. Deep down, we don't want to say hello. It depends. I don't do that always. I do that with people I don't like. If I, I do it with my yeah, wife or mother, forget the others. Okay. I'm like, oh God, here's my wife. Boom, lift out. Wait, wait, sorry, what is the word similar to misogynist? Which uh, misogynist means hating women. What is the word that means hating all people? What is there's there's a word for that? Misogyny is putting it on a, on a high. It's not. It's not misogyny, and and you know I'm not Hitler. You know I'm not like a genocidal maniac who hates a type of people. Misandrist. No, 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 no. Misandrist. I'm just saying I don't see the validity in in this relationship of hellos and byes and all because there's really none. I'm I'm just saying we can live in peace, but why do we have to actually have greetings? What happens in Diwali and Christmas? You got to say a full sentence. That Happy Diwali. And to you, Happy Christmas. Also to you, Naujod Mubarak. How to you? I mean, it doesn't end. I mean, you know, I mean, so no. we're we're about to see the Happy New Year's come in, right? I mean, oh like shit! In bulk, in Damn like it! No, don't, don't, please. I want to choke yeah. myself. That's and now because the people like Kunal Vijayakar have the ability to send the messages to the universe without any personal <laughs> touch. The, everybody feels that karma is great. Press button, send to 500 people on phone. F you. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, who we love, Maria the the VJ, they made us uh, all send little uh, things for her birthday, which happened last week, and uh-huh. all the MTV guys and all. A lot, forty people have sent small, small montages. I must have sent something horrific myself, but she sent a general uh, thing back. Hi guys, thank you for everything and all. I was horrified. If you're going to say something, say you know, tell me what you like to. If you did not like my video, just say something. Nothing personal. It was just a general memo from the CEO to the rest. I I I don't like that either, right? I mean, like the, the, this stuff drives me insane. That that this, but when I see somebody at that point, I want to acknowledge them and I want hmm. them to acknowledge me. But you know, I mean, when you then the, the hypocrisy somebody. is that uh, do you really? Because basically, you're hoping to, against hope that he doesn't make eye contact or notice you, so that you can carry on on your path. That's what 80% of the people Cyrus, are doing. I like me. people. I generally like. I people. also I like people, dislike but people. not people I know. There's a huge difference. So I think about them, this. I love them. Huh. I think about this often. Like you know how when you're at a mall and you see like someone you know at a distance, but you're like, ah oh, man, I don't want to go to go talk to them. Good. Yeah. You know. So what do you do? But do you ever wonder? Does that happen to you when someone else oh, sees you from a distance? Like, hey, I don't exactly. want to talk to this person. <laughs> In fact, the regulars who avoid you mostly avoid you because they just don't want to say not because they don't like you. Oh, They're you just know? shy, introverted, yeah. don't want to say hi. The reasons like that. See, this but, is but, your uh, this, this, both of you. This is your artistry, uh, your artist side, right? My this yeah. is I see somebody even if I am not like the biggest fan of that person, I just don't want to go say hi, right? I mean, no, like no, unless no. I really actively dislike somebody, then maybe you try and do this, but that's rare. I want to say hi to people. I want to say hello to people. I want to say what's up once. I was trying to remove my tire many years ago on the road. <laughs> I'm half under a car. He still comes up to me, Mr. Dhawan, my friend, and says, "Hello, good morning." So I have to come out, say good morning, because I'm a nice guy, and then go all the way back. And I'm really struggling until Aisha came but, and actually did the. She does the tire the, stuff. But I mean, like you just you shout now. Hey, I'm doing something right now. But thanks, good to see you but guys. But couldn't he see my head was inside? 
I mean, could he let me go this one time? Give me a pass. Yeah. Just keep walking. Oh. Uh, so, I don't know, man. I, 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 so this is my thing. I don't like long interactions with people, right? Uh, <laughs> like, I, I, I've been, you want to stop? But I like to, I like to meet people. He says hello. Amit says hello <laughs> back. The guy says, hey, by the way, did you hear about the latest? No. No, 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 no. It's hello, and that's no, our no. relationship. <laughs> oh, okay. <Off> go. <laughs> so I've had a few parties I've had to go for in the last couple of weeks, and I guess by saying have to go for, I'm indicating the fact no. that I don't like going to parties generally, yeah, right? But once you go but, there, then, then, then that's wrong. That's wrong. Why did you go? What? If you go, you can't be antisocial. I'm not that's antisocial. Wrong. I'll go and I'll talk to everybody. I'll go and talk to everybody for like, you know, a little bit. I want to talk to everybody for five, ten minutes each, and then I'm good. I'm done. So I, I, I've left both parties in like two hours and I've taken shit from some other friends. Like, why the hell are you leaving? What about food and drink and all that? That doesn't play a role. Uh, there, there is drink is available as soon as you go to the party and food starters yeah, so, so, are floating. I'm saying once you have your two or three drinks, don't you get into a yeah. more peaceful, uh, more cohabit? Everybody's so friendly once you, uh, when I used to drink, uh, of course. Uh, three, four drinks and everybody's a really happy, a community of happiness yeah. for, for a yes. while. You don't get into that space. No, I don't. I, I, I like, to, so my thing is always, uh, so, uh, okay, so, very, 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 very close and dear friend of mine had a party uh, a couple of This stays on the internet for years. I know. Okay, you am, that's careful. why I'm saying he's such an amazing guy, such a great friend of mine. He's the best. Okay, I'm... in every which way. Okay. It's not good. It's not good. Uh, <laughs> but he had a party on a Sunday afternoon at uh, the Wink nightclub in The President. Right. Okay. And I'm just like, dude, I can't go to a nightclub at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I just, I can't. It's it's just like, you know. In the old days, you could come out of it at 12 in the afternoon. At 12 o'clock in the afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, like, I can't do that stuff anymore, man, right? So I mean, like, and it's loud. And I'm meet, and see, this is the thing also, right? This is the first time I'm meeting this group of friends since pretty much the pandemic started. Because they're good friends, but we're not like, you know, hanging out all the time or anything like that, right? So I, I was really, I was really happy to meet everybody, but we couldn't hear each other. None of us could hear each other. And now, it was like, dude. Now you know yeah. the teetotaler's problem. This is exactly what we didn't realize, you know, in the old days when we drank a lot or whatever. You can yeah. see it the other side now. Yeah, go on. Oh, no, I got hammered very quickly because I mean, like, yeah, it's like a nightclub. That, it's music. It's yeah. daytime. I mean, I, I mean, like, you know, it's Sunday afternoon. I got drunk very, very quickly. I had like four drinks down oh, within you, like an hour and a half. We, we can refer to older episodes where we've accepted that if we go to a nightclub, we expect it to be loud. And when we go for dinner, we expect it to be soft. Now, having yes. said that, we can't have it both ways. So yeah. whether it's afternoon or night, nightclub is a nightclub. People are expected to go there and not talk about Socrates, you know. Yeah, it's not I about get the that. philosophy that should bring the humanity together or things like that. You know, I didn't even know that you can book a nightclub for the afternoon. Uh, oh, but this is all playing against the grain because of the fact that you're in a pandemic, so you're innovative. Yeah. The party animal and your hats off to him is saying, F you, let's have it at 7 in the morning. I'm okay with that. You want to beat the system, you've got to rejig it a little bit. That's what they're doing. Yeah, that's fine. Right. The point is, the people of like-minded passion and you know love and energy for partying, they will accept this. And the lesser lights will be like, bro, you know, it's not making sense to me. Hence, I'm saying once you cross that line and enter the party, you better be in a party mood. It's not right to go there. You know, this is why I don't encourage people with visual problems to go to libraries. I, I had a good time with everybody. I, I I hung out with everybody, but I left in an hour and a half, two hours because I'm like, dude, I can't take this shit anymore, right? I mean, it's not my cup of tea. I don't like the kind. I I, I I like to be able to talk to people. That's what I like to do. I don't like to this, which is why I don't run away from people when I see them. I like to talk to people. I extend the whole problem to you know, uh, being neighborly. So you must say hello, really. But do we really want to like each other and spend time with each other? We don't. So what is this neighborly? Let's say hello. No, but I have neighbors who... Uh, the quality of the relationship... We have neighbors who we don't like, who we don't say hello to, right? Yeah, that's the other side. And in a very pointed way, right? You're in the lift together and you will look yeah, away oh, from terrible. each other. Oh, wow. That's terrible. That's terrible. Yeah. So... We but why get into the same lift? Just avoid the lift. Also. No, no, but that's bad luck when you just open it and the guy's yeah. already in. Yeah, I know. That's, that's... What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to then be like, no, I... We did some MTV Bakra and lifts and I learned so much about lifts just watching because we were testing the lift and just watching on the thing. You And we realized we don't do anything. People would walk into... And this was in Pawai, by the way. We'd walk into the lift and the people's body language, the one guy turns because he doesn't want to make eye contact. The other person is going as far away as possible. Uh, someone is standing very close to the door and going on pressing the buttons like as if it's going to make any difference. You just see all this. They're subtle. But it's just amazing just how people are uncomfortable and awkward in a lift without doing yeah. anything in terms of gag. And, and we, I was like, let's just keep watching this. It was fascinating. <laughs> it, it is. Uh, it, it kind of is, right? I mean, like, uh, so it's... Um, I, I Watching people when they don't know they're being watched or when they've forgotten they're being watched. Ask something. You dig your nose and stuff. I don't know. 
No, it, it, it's all kinds of stuff, right? But I mean, like, it is the most, like, you see the most weird kind of like, wait, what did I just see kind of stuff happen in some, some of those situations? It, it really is a this, right? I mean, like, um, so we have CCTV in the office, right? And But in the new office, I don't have CCTV in my room. I used to have it in the old room. I remember, uh, sorry, in the old office. And I remember that over there, I was always surprised by seeing the kinds of things that people mm -hmm. were getting up to, right? Because people forget, right, that they're on CCTV because it's just there all the time. Let's talk Rishi. Our sound man. What the oh. hell was he doing? So Rishi even... sits in the studio by himself, uh, and he 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 seems to be either obsessed with stuff on the internet because he's always kind of like you know just like his head down all the time. And sometimes I just wonder, Rishi, pick up a book, man. If you're just sitting there waiting for another recording to start, pick up a book and read something. So socially awkward, I would say. Spend so much time with the internet, there's not a deal with human beings anymore. I, I think we, the... we can't take him to a nightclub and leave him there. He'll be like, what? What's <laughs> go I need the net. What's going on? Where's the Wi-Fi? <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad he can't talk back. But let's, should we take a break? We've gone well over. Yes, take a break. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Agla Station Adulthood, Ritash and Ayushi speak to Marissa May. She is the curator of No More Lonely Friends. They discuss toxic friendships and pandemic loneliness. Also, do check out Probation Set Promotion, Talk with Abhinav Trivedi. He will help you make your CV stand out when you're looking for a job. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam and Soumya Shah, co-founder of Tarakki, discuss what the current trends are in the wealth management industry. On All Things Policy, the folks from the Takshashila Institute shed light on the implication of China's infrastructure building in Tibet. And on Tere Mere Raste, Kesho tells us about a small village in the Himalayas called Tirugi Narayan. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. We'd also really appreciate any ratings or reviews you can give us on any of the platforms that we're listening on, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or IVM Podcast app. Whatever you're listening, do let us know that you are listening. I'd also like to remind you all that we have a number of YouTube channels where a number of shows are available. You can go to ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube to check out what channels we have. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Cred, Bank of Baroda, CoinSwitch, Kuber, and Intel. Thank you so much for making this possible. Last week of the year, last week of a grind for many people. And uh, But now we, there's no point thinking about the pandemics behind us and all, right? Now we just have to say that new normal, I hate you, I don't want to use that word, don't choke me, but that new normal, we just had an event and the, the head the guy from Tel Aviv, he used the word new normal and started laughing because now the new normal is really new and yeah. really normal. Yeah. Like, because what do we do? Like you said, you told the IVM guys you can work from home, but you can come here. It's all fluid and flexible, the new normal. Yeah, it is. I, I, I mean, uh, the thing, though, I mean, like what uh, nobody wants to work from home, everybody wants to come to office. And uh, that is interesting in and of itself. But also for the proprietor, for you and the people who are, you know, I mean, there's a responsibility factor. So you want to keep that door open slightly. And yeah. say, you know, it's sort of flexible. So that brother, I mean, come on, that's what everybody's doing in management also. They can't, yeah. nobody's going to, no one is going to take uh, responsibility and uh, be accountable because they can't actually, how can you? I'm just thinking well, about so, the RT-PCR test for 31st December for parties mm -hmm. and stuff. In the government's way of also saying that, look, I'm not responsible. I don't want to stop you because huh. we understand what everything, but I want to make sure this is the rider. You know, you do it and you didn't do it. Or, that you guys yeah. are taking a test. Yeah, yeah. no, that makes sense. I, I didn't know that, but that makes a lot well, of it's sense on, it's to on do, full right? full way in many yeah. cities of India now. It, yeah. it, it makes a ton of sense, right? I mean, I, I'm, I'm really interested to see... Um, uh, but, you know, it's really interesting that this Omicron that's out there, right? People are talking about how, uh, so for, uh, initial indications were that it will probably be faster spreading, but a little, uh, but milder. Now it looks yeah. like it's faster spreading, but not as much milder as we were hoping for. Little yeah. milder, but not as milder as we were hoping but, for, right? But I think what's really interesting is that there are some really, uh, so one is many people are vaccinated now. So even if you're vaccinated with Omicron, it has an effect on the uh, this. But the other thing that I think is really interesting now that we're starting to see is the really quick tests right the mm -hmm. home based tests the quick tests all of these things are starting to come out in the us i'm waiting for them to really uh, i'm hoping that they, we start seeing them in other parts of the so world so we do get i'll tell you i had a very horrible experience with them okay my mother uh, if you remember like a couple of months back had covid so yeah. we had gotten the covid self tests for our for ourselves the uh, the re uh -huh. rest of the remainder uh, members of the family uh, to get covid self tests done so we got three because three were available in the in the, in the shop right. that we got, got from and the first one we opened and there's no liquid okay there's supposed to be a liquid at the bottom of the thing 
where right. you are supposed to put your dab your uh, sample in and like a you, litmus that, test <laughs> yeah like a litmus test so there's no liquid okay and then i'm mean, like then we like okay fine this must be just like a faulty thing we open the second one and there is a liquid but inside the liquid there is a hair there is a piece of hair inside the liquid and it feels like one of those curly hairs so you're like suspect as to where it's from also so yeah Ooh. that's so bizarre uh, that's so, not good that's obviously yeah. not good right exactly you so paid two for out pubes. of three tests yeah <laughs> <laughs> two out of three tests given me a call i'm happy to send yeah. what the hell is that kobe <laughs> self thing whoever which our company that is kobe yeah. self you're doing a terrible job man just do better yeah. with oh, they could have been a sponsor we lost a sponsor now just because they're bad doesn't mean <laughs> <we> had... <laughs> okay no no we we we'll, we'll still be sponsored by you we'll change our tune <laughs> but yeah. then the, think of it <laughs> bringing pubes back in fashion yeah. <laughs> no but it is uh, well you know i mean like uh, the uh, so the thing with the, if i'm not mistaken the kobe self test right now is a single use yeah. test right there okay. there was a new one that got announced last week which is a reusable test so basically you have to buy it uh, i i think it costs like $50 or $60 it's it's us released it's not here yet 50 or $60 for the thing and then every test you want to do it costs you like a certain amount of money to get the uh, solution for the test can can we segue to uh, a segment i like to call uh, the basketball version which is me yes because i was reading something you know i like the sports pages i read everything it was yeah. hamilton uh, losing in the final thing or even i don't even like motor sports but i read it uh, so this steph curry friend of yours mm-hmm. steph curry yes. uh, apparently he's now the greatest uh, three pointer the world has ever seen um, mm-hmm. Biggest shooter, most most three points ever, most, most three points three ever made. Points, whatever. So uh, I yes. just wanted to ask you: Does that mean he's the guy who shoots away from the the basket, like he's the longest reach? Yeah. Yeah, that's my memory of basketball. Yeah, yeah. So three pointers is like basically outside the circle. Isn't that doesn't that make him the solo guy, the guy who does is not the team player who's always taking shots from far? Not at all, because uh, the way that he plays is he plays one of the most collaborative games you could possibly imagine. His entire game is what's called a pick and. But then why is he taking the three pointer always from ahead and not going forward with the other guys and passing? So what wound up happening, right, is about five six years ago, uh, probably uh, with Steph's advent, right? There's what's called the analytic. analytic analytics revolution in basketball uh which is in which is a fancy way of saying that people realize that data to stop the guy three points is more than two points oh. right that is basically a fancy way of saying that so if you are shooting three pointers at 40% that's better than shooting two pointers at 50% on 100 shots right if you make four three point uh, sorry at 40% if you're making three pointers that's 120 points on 100 shots if you're making two pointers at 50% that's 100 points so over a long period of time three pointers are this so what wound up happening is that uh, there became this efficiency kind of thing that came into basketball where the best shots are either right at the basket because over there you get 60 70 80% kind of completion rates right so very close to the basket or outside the three point shot by good shooters and steph is a phenomenal shooter But also when you close to the basket i'm presuming the defenders are right there and whether oh. it's 80% or not they've always got a chance of stopping you or at least distracting you or whatever yeah. edging you here and there but when you're doing the three pointers like a set piece you get away from everybody and then you that's when you but, but you're not that's why you do people, it right but if you're a, if you're steph then the whole idea is you, you create you. space and then you and no but you're not able uh, creating space is so the he's challenge he's not a solo right? selfish player that's it cannot be because you creating space is the challenge right i mean like being able to create space for yourself on the three point line, line if you see how steph plays right i mean like there's so much passing that happens between him and other players and the, so there's something called a pick and roll in the uh, in basketball right what a pick and roll means is that uh, there is one person stand, uh, let, let, let's say there there are two offensive players one What? has the ball so everybody wants the, you to the, show uh, uh physically, physically well, it's, demonstrate it's, okay so there to uh, let me try and verbally kind of make it clear right there are uh, there are two offensive players being defended by two defensive players right so uh, let's say player uh, 1a one and on one 1b basically. yeah 1a and 1b 2a and 2b right so mm-hmm. 1a is being defended by 2a 2b is de- uh, 1b is being defended by 2b what mm-hmm. uh, what happens is 1a tries to run in such a way so that 1b or, or sorry uh, 2b bumps into his teammate so that gives him a little bit of space right so the, the so you're basically trying to run in such a way and then that's the fundamental play in basketball right that basically how do you kind of stop how do you run somebody into somebody else right because you're not allowed to fall somebody if 1b runs to 2b does 1b tell 2b to be or not to be uh, that is the question see i 
I did it. Beautifully done. I Beautifully did done. it. <laughs> there is hope for stand-up comedy without an audience. And, and yeah, I'm, aren't we glad there is no audience? Thank God. Yeah. Oh, okay. no, last, the, my last he, point. My last point on this is, I just want to ask you. So, how big is this achievement of him being the greatest three-pointer in terms of statistics? So, is it Steph like is a, it's like a godly he, achievement, or it's a normal? He is. Not, he is a godly player. Uh, I think there's no question about that. He's changed how basketball is played completely. Uh, because again, he is so good at this, and he's good at the pick and roll part of it, right? So it's not just the shooting part of it, right? If you look at uh, NBA games before the games start, when people are just shooting, everybody is making everything, okay? But Steph is a master of being able to make space for himself in the course of a game. It's huge, but the thing is this, right? It's also uh, it, it to some degree it. Uh, the game has changed so much that he has so many more opportunities, right? Like, so for example, I, I think right now the lowest number for a team, uh, team's attempts per game for a three point shot is somewhere in the 20s. That used to be under 10. 20. Percent or twenty points, twenty times, twenty times, twenty to thirty times a game, right? So I mean, like okay. the no, lowest number of attempts are in the twenties, right? And that used to be under. And what is the what is the average? Uh, I, I think 23, 24, 25 attempts per game, something like that, right? Where it used to be that like the highest averages would be like seven times per game, like twenty years ago. Wow! So it's an apple to orange comparison, right? When you compare a uh, Reggie Miller or Ray Allen, who were the previous bests. I could have been an NBA star. I used to only do three pointers in my limited yeah. basketball experience. Well, you would have I, been. I didn't like to run. I, I always today, thought it was the lazy, lazy man's option. You know, so you get the ball and just go for it. It's actually not because uh, so say, there's a there there there's a uh, uh, ex very popular player podcaster uh, called JJ Reddick, right? So JJ Reddick is uh, he's got a podcast called Three Men on the Boat. Really fun podcast to listen to, uh, and uh, he basically they they mapped his running. Right? How much did he run while he was playing? And he ran two to three times more than most other players did. Wow, per game? Be per game, because he has to keep he has to keep like you know trying to get his defender to go on to somebody else. So he has to drag his defender with him as he keeps running. He's like a prime minister. He's traveled more than three times any other politician <laughs> in India uh, in terms of going yes, abroad. Absolutely. Wow. Okay, listen. Let's shall we start doing the AMAs? Silver is getting bored with the basketball chat. That's Silver, okay. what no, it's it's fine. We don't have too many AMA questions. Oh, we have only so some more in, in, NBA. So we have NBA. What you <laughs> no, no, no. We got <laughs> we got some topics. I have an interesting question. Before that, uh, is uh, we were talking about birthdays, and I don't think we ever addressed this. Have you have you guys ever wondered what celebrities you share your birthdays with? I, I know. Uh, of you. Yeah, Cyrus. I, I, I looked it up. Greg, Greg Chappell, Wakar Yunus. So for me, cricketers oh, really? are celebrities. I'm, yeah, both of them. Uh, so, and and oh, Wakar okay. and me, same year, seventy-one. Also, Charlie Theron, Cyrus, is the same day as you. There you go. Uh, I mean, look, Charlie Theron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm mistaken for Charlie yeah. Theron everywhere I go. I'm trying to see who <laughs> do I have. I have, uh, dude. I have Sushant Singh Rajput. Wow. Yeah, I yeah. have Gina Davis. Gina Davis, that's nice. You have David Duchovny, uh, Cyrus. David Duchovny is on the same day as oh, you. Yeah, uh, the, you the, know, the, the sex uh, show and uh, and. Yeah, uh, the what is that? Yeah, House files? One of no. the other lady. God, Ace files. Remember no, the names? What? X files. X files. X files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah correct. That's correct. what made him famous. So, yeah. Yeah. You know who I share my birthday with? I was just randomly oh. looking it up. And Please Frank. Say my <laughs> and Frank. Oh, oh, oh really? Wow. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. great, bro. Like, what are the odds? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's interesting. Right. I can't believe I've never done this before. I also share my birthday with Paul Allen, co-founder of Microsoft. Uh, yeah. and uh, Jack but Nicholas. for an accident of birth. <laughs> <laughs> also, so, Carrie uh, Minati and George W. H. W. Bush is on the same day as me. George H. W. Bush, the president. I yeah, have Jack, he, he, he start to fall asleep in between here and there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, but, but again, have, just like you, he's actually a very intelligent fellow, but disguised as a non intelligent fellow. Yeah, uh, that's that's how you I, I think he's got some <laughs> unnecessary criticism. Oh, sorry, go on. Uh, 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 I have uh, Jack Nicholas, the greatest golfer of all time. Wow, I have Christian Dior. Christian Dior. The, Christian Dior, yeah, a the, perfume manufacturer from where to where. You started Microsoft, then you did colognes. I mean, you you're all over the place. In between, you hit the you hit the T, a couple of birdies and an eagle. Huh. And, and oh shit! Okay, wait, I didn't realize. Okay, I also have. Uh, I didn't uh, read the whole thing because I didn't recognize the picture. But Rasputin. Wow, Whoa. Well, that's a gray area. There's a gray area. Looked uh, from both sides of the, the coin, um, yeah. but at least some kind of crazy qualities. You can't be killed, and chicks love you. 
<laughs> and you have a russian accent <laughs> so okay. it's a for three and you have a song uh, about you yeah ra ra rasputin <laughs> yeah lover of the russian queen and the, was it a black cat when you were born uh i don't know the answer to that given that i was a baby wow that's interesting who who the, who the nefarious notorious people that we could be linked to then you suddenly the whole thing changes yeah, yeah no it's well so i mean the, I, I, okay so it's not just rasputin i also have kim.com do you guys remember kim.com no. no what what is it uh, uh so kim.com is this new zealander who basically um uh he was a tech billionaire but he was also the most wanted guy imaginable because he used to run a site called mega upload right and mega upload uh, yeah i remember yeah well, was basically the full piracy it was just total yeah, out and out piracy site oh. correct yeah yeah correct. so he was one of the pioneers of piracy on the internet so wow whatever wow. That is. i owe him so a, much i owe this person so yeah. much <laughs> yeah we we owe him our first youtube uh, uh, performance in a sense yeah which yeah. went down which went down the youtube oh, oh. <laughs> all right all right uh, let's do one topic and then let's finally yeah. get to the emails the one topic that we should cover that we've been meaning to cover for the last couple of weeks is the topic about uh, so <coughs> in pune Sorry. this oh, wow what okay. just happened <laughs> What There's the drilling going on, and immediately I sneezed. Oh. Ah, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm uh, getting my RT PCR. Very. Okay. Cool. And this is how I showed at the airport anyway. Uh, RT PCR, RT PCR. Uh, are all, all your sneezes <laughs> like that? Like that loud? Are all your sneezes like that? Or are you able to are you able to suppress your sneeze if you need to? Sorry. I could, but I sort of exaggerated it. I went the other way. Okay, that's all. Uh, I apologize. Huh, cool. I thought the show is dying anyway. Seems... Might as well go down with the ship and give it a couple. <laughs> so yeah. Like I had. Yeah. I I had a I had a bo- school uh, a friend in boarding school who used to literally sneeze making this sound every time he was yeah. because he was suppressing his uh, his sneeze every time this was the sound he would make like apchi apchi that's literally the sound he would make I don't know why but that's how he would suppress however if you do the, do the other way around you have to immediately uh, not make eye contact make it really loud in a room and then act very normal immediately with soft <laughs> it's great fun I've it's done like, it all my life like, just sneeze really yeah, loudly yeah. everybody stops and looks at you and just your back kind of in gross and whatever yeah. it's fun yeah. yeah this is why you shouldn't say hello well, go on <laughs> <laughs> topic topic bro topic yeah yeah Time topic running out. Uh, so basically uh cops have been uh, cops in bombay and maharashtra have been told not to eat parceled food from restaurants in public as it hurts their image supposedly okay this happened a few months back about 4 or 5 months back where uh, this uh, started in pune where uh, uh, the deputy commissioner of police could be heard on a, a voice note basically uh, saying out instructions saying ke go get food from a nearby restaurant don't worry do you don't have to basically pay for it basically saying that you because we are cops you get it free of cost is what the uh, is what this person was implying uh, so now what happened was in uh, worli uh, uh, a senior police officer uh, see, uh, some senior police officers saw other police officers standing outside the worli atria mall police uh, police station or uh, no they were standing just outside atria, atria mall, mall police and, station no no atria mall they're standing outside atria oh. mall in worli and uh, these cops see the these uh, junior cops to them but eating restaurant food with the packaging on and they're like hey hey man makes it look it makes us look like uh, we have again not paid for our food so we have to stop this we can't be see, uh, seen eating restaurant food in public at all now which is uh, i think another all they had to do was remove the branding they remove the branding they, they would have yeah, been okay you can't everything. quite tell where the ghar se laya hu ya ya mere ghar pe roz butter chicken banta hai aaj mera birthday hai to maine mangwaya whatever The, but yeah. the packaging is a problem. Yeah, but this is just a dumb thing, right? Because again, it's the same. It's our Indian tendency in many ways to so, like you know treat the okay. symptom. Leave yeah. India alone for a second. What do you hide the, the problem rest? basically? Yeah. When a cop in America goes into a, a cafe and just for a small coffee or whatever, does he get charged? Uh, mostly no. Uh, uh, sorry, mostly yes, but because it depends on the uh, dip- depends on the city. New York City, for example, has extraordinarily strict rules because this used to be a big problem over there, where cops would just go and, like, you know, they'd get a bunch of food for free Donuts. and stuff like that. It was a big problem, and so they kind of uh, they've created like a very kind of an anonymous, quick hotline 
which anybody can reply to and strict action is taken on the basis of complaints made over there. So in New York, it's become so that uh, you're not allowed to do it at hey, all. But if I'm a cop and I offer to pay and you, Mr. Smith, say, no, no, it's on the house, then what do I do? You're still not allowed to. You have to pay. But I, I can't. Uh, the guy says he doesn't want to take money from me. What am I supposed it to do? It doesn't matter. You have to make the payment or you have to leave the good. You are not allowed to exchange goods for free. That's horrible. What's about yeah, being a cop uh, if you can't exploit so, the situation? Yeah. I would only be but, a cop to get free food, free drinks, free parking. That's but again, smaller cities, uh, smaller towns, this stuff is nowhere close to as strict, right? So, I mean, it it varies across. And there'll be a proper uh, Lena Dena situation in a smaller town where the guy goes to the same place and yeah. that owner can keep his establishment on late and, you know, bend the rules here and there because they're all, you know, that's it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. I get my apple pie and leave every time. I, hey, so, come on. The system. The, it, I like it. So the the I I remember reading about this once, right? The, where a trick being used by somebody was that any city worker, uh, they were giving a discount to, right? Where you can buy one and get three free or something like that. The the reason why that's, wow. no, but the 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 reason why they were doing it, right, was because they had a crime problem, and so by doing this and making cops aware that hey, that you is, can come yeah. here and get this for this kind of a cheap rate. Right, and it followed the guidelines of the city, but it was like as cut to the bone as it could be, right? So it was legal, but it was as cut. But the idea was to create traffic of cops throughout the night in the store. Or they could just. This is a good point. They could just give a twenty-five percent uh, mandate that if you government servant, you get twenty-five percent off in an establishment. Yeah, yeah, some, they, 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 they they made this in a way that worked, right? So that it followed the rules, but at the same time, it kind of made it a good, attractive deal for cops to keep coming. But coming back to the Indian part of it, right? I mean, like if you think about the way that they're saying that, hey, don't use packaging, don't eat out in public, solve the problem by doing something like this hotline, right? Where people can call yeah. in and complain about yeah. this kind of a thing yeah. instead of this. Because now, yeah. what's happening over Not here with this, yeah. this is exactly the same thing as like, you know, the insistence that you must met a, wear a mask when you're sitting by yourself in the car or sitting with your, uh, yeah, you know, stupid. family yeah. member in the car. It's the same kind of thing, right? I mean, like, what is the logic of this? This makes no yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and also he's, he's just he's just showing on. that there's there's some sense of action, but there's like you said, it's just stupid. It doesn't go to the root of the problem, which is the yeah. which also comes from the manufacturing side. For in this case, the hotelier, you know, yeah. got to also put his foot down and say, I don't want to do this. Why do I have to do this? But yeah. they, see, that's really tough, right? I mean, like, how do you? They should have rules, you know, like if the cop is attractive, then okay, fair enough. Or if the cop is you know super polite, then maybe if the cop actually helps uh, somebody in front of them with their bags or whatever, there should be a reason. And then he said, okay, sir, up. It can't be on the business owner to do that, right? Well, the business owner is not going to do that, right? I mean, like, remember we were speaking about the problem we had with the union a while ago with that whole yeah. extortion shit, yeah. uh, which happened in the new mm -hmm. office. We've taken some extra space on the third, uh, on on in the same building for like, you know, like uh, some of the other people who need, we need more space, right? And mm -hmm. uh, same problems have come up again. The same person? Right. Same problem. Uh, hey. Well, different person, same organization. Because the hey, same person God. got a little this, right? So, I mean, like, it's happened again, right? But again, this time, there, there is a little bit of a difference. We're not as desperate to get the space done as quickly as we can. And so, kind of put this. But again, the thing is, it can't be on me to have to report these guys because hey. these guys are going to screw with my life. Uh, why don't you just make me an offer? I'll take care of it, me and Silvery. We just need your car for a couple of hours. Okay, it's going to happen. <laughs> They won't even know. Don't be able to see them again. Okay. Amit, were you in the US during the after the post 9 11 stop and frisk uh, era? I was when... not. Oh, okay. I was not. I was back in India before then. Okay. I, I heard some friends who had some issues, but the, the thing is that most of the people I know are. Uh, you know they're uh, they they're not the people who are getting harassed, even if they are Indian skin colored. Right or brown skin it's colored at that also time. Also, the timing, the, the, the right. timing. If it was very immediate, people were not reacting as negatively as you think. Uh, yeah. It happened a little later, but it continues that the uh, brown skin yeah. people would react bad, badly, or take it uh, be more sensitive to the whole issue. I think initially everybody was on the same page. It wasn't much of a problem initially, but then as it got drawn out, obviously it is. No, but it became. It was more of a problem for so like. In the U.S., if you look at uh, Indian immigrants, right, they generally have followed two paths in terms of... As far as possible. Okay, well, I, we clearly know that, right? Like, you don't want to say hi to nobody. I don't want to say hello. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm they see for God's sake. I've come all the way to a foreign country. There's nothing they see after all that, man. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the generally, immigration has followed two paths in the U.S., right? One is the highly educated immigration, right? Uh, people like my father, people like my uncles, 
my dad's friends, their kids, like, you know, uh, co so there's that path of people who are there. The other is people who come from, like, you know, who are more kind of economic immigrants labor rather class. than, like, yeah, labor class, right? Yes, folks who are, uh, and, and you see a lot of these folks in New York, Chicago, It's, a, it's more Texas. class issue than a race issue. It all comes together. Race yeah, class. It, it, yeah, it kind of all does, right? But then again, the, more, the thing is that those are class. the... Yeah. Those are the folks who deal with the harassment, right? The people who are like, so you basically know, basically, well, you and me, working class yeah. people with brown skin yeah. who are stuck. Yeah, there. I know. Working class people who live in Pawai and Malabar Hill, those are the people who deal with the problems. Well, that's and, really and far. If, yeah. if your job is in, you know, New York, it's really stupid <laughs> yeah. that we go all No, but uh, you see, again, you're the, uh, generally speaking, right? Uh, the kinds of folks who come from these areas are not the people who are having these problems. It's the people who come from, like, you know, the illegal immigrants from Punjab who have snuck in, right? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, those mm -hmm. are the place, those are the kinds of folks who are uh, generally facing these kinds of issues. I've always enjoyed a little bit of racism. I've always found it fun to pass the day. But let's get to the AMAs because I've got to take my mother for lunch. Sure, sure. And feed sure. Yeah. All right. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Board Brocha. I'm so bored. I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just, just, just follow me. AMAs. This first one comes in from Aditya Krishna Koduganti. Uh, he says, Hi, Silas and team. I'm a big fan Hello. of your show and look forward to your episodes every day. Been an avid listener for, of your podcast. Would be very grateful if you take up my question in your next podcast. Yes, we are doing it. That's all my you question need to is, do. Yeah. The moment you say things like that, you know, you're in. Yeah, yeah that's all <laughs> it's, 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 it's just like how you catch ESPN who's covering the show or the sports <laughs> thing that you're at and you just say, I are love you. Are we finally ESPN. doing email AMAs on Twitch after such a yeah, long yeah. time? Yeah, after yeah. a long time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, dear yeah. listeners, please keep sending in email e AMAs as well. We need them for episodes like this when we are. I can't believe you said dear listeners. It's like we're a college show all over again. I dear mean, listeners. They are dear listeners, man. They're all very sweet, nice. They're people. too nice. <laughs> the last, the last of the nice guys. Yeah. <laughs> my que my question is to yeah. all three of you: The Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar have sued Facebook for hundred and fifty billion dollars for enticing hate speech and failure to take down anti-inflammatory uh, posts which helped perpetuate a genocide. Facebook was willing to trade lives of minorities in Myanmar for better growth and market penetration. Is it high time that Facebook compensate the survivors or provide reparations slash support for fanning ethnic violence? Also, should Facebook be given an ultimatum to police its content and redesign platform pl policies before it leads to a serious revolt and ban by the federal court? Yeah, these guys, I mean, you take this one. The OTTs have put their legs in the SHIT, if you ask me, with trying to police and or not police because you can't, yeah. you know, it's got to be, it can't be selective. And sometimes... The so OTTs can police. Facebook cannot. If Facebook is to police its content, it's a different product. It's not the same thing. So what's right? your point then? So you're saying well, it's, it's just uh, allow the speech, like we always say. Uh, we just have to let it go. Well, yeah. So, I mean, like, my general this is that go after the people who do the violence. Why are you going after the communication medium? No, no, right? no. I no. Mean, like, There's a direct link there, in a sense, because you're perpetuating hate. He's not off the mark. How, how right? are you perpetuating hate? How is Facebook... The platform is not perpetuating, perpetuating hate, but, but the people who are who are putting it out there are. If, if so, they okay. Are. Now, you tell me this, right? The uh, You want to pull off certain amounts of content, right, from Facebook. Try, consider the scale I, at which Facebook no, no, operates. I'm on your side in that I don't want to do that. I don't what an effective solution is, but I cannot deny the fact that there's a link between people being exposed to what's on Facebook and then misbehaving or, or you know, being in some way uh, jaundiced or prejudiced. But, you remember those, that, uh, the whistleblower who just came out, sorry, sorry, hmm. one quick thing, yeah. that whistleblower who just came out saying that Facebook has the power to at least monitor these things like fake news, monitor uh, hate but how speech. will they? How but will they, they don't? They have chosen again, not to. It's a very selective process. It'll never please everyone. So I, yeah. you know, it's, it's ridiculously yeah. stupid to even try. You're, you're going you to really have some, think about it. You have the right wing will be pissed off if you take down right wing news. The left wing will be pissed off if you take down left no, no, wing guys, news. You're not talking about sexism, homosexuality, racism, nationalism, religion. What talk about personal things? Yeah. Just the personal thing affects people so much more because each and everybody has a personal offense that they take. So where's the end to it? I say ban Facebook yeah. fully. What do you need? <laughs> Can't you just call people on a PCO? Yeah. Hello, auntie, is Akash there? Okay, tell him to call me back. It was great. It worked beautifully. There was no residue effect of any kind. 
I, I, I see. I, I struggle with some of it. I understand that you need to take down some degree of hate speech at some point in time. But I think that the challenge over here is a lot is a lot harder and is nowhere close to as easy as people are making it out to be. Right? Facebook has over a billion users. Right? Over a billion, billion with a B. Right? Just think about how many posts that means. Right. Even uh, just think about how do you then start saying, okay, okay, this is hate and this is not. Because if you start taking people's content down willy nilly, people are not going to use Facebook. Right. They'll go to other platforms and other platforms exist for the same. With, with, and all no, of them no, have this, the this same is not, You're right. This is not an issue on platform. This is an issue, this is a philosophical issue on whether you have the right to just be a platform and we have to just take it with a pinch of salt, frankly. But whatever's there is there. You can't monitor or police it. It needs to come from the government, is it? Like these regulations. It, it exactly. It has to be government. The the thing is this: this shit is so complicated and so hard that the government doesn't understand it. Which is why you see all these stupid ass kind of like you know remarks passed by different government bodies, whether in India, whether in the U.S., wherever it is. Right? You just you just you cannot. Uh, it, this yeah, but you know there are obvious things like uh, you know inciting hatred of you know community and all, which is mentioned here. But what about the less obvious things? If, if if the post after post is saying kill all these people of one community or whatever, so kill is an easy word. The problem is not when the word kill is used. No, I'm saying supposing there is. This is hypothetically. Let's say there is. What about the other issues? You you can't stop the other issues. These are big yeah. certain issues where you can sort of look at it from a perspective and say you know you're attacking a community or whatever. So we tone this down. But how are you going to do something between me and Silvery, for example? Yeah. Okay, that's also offensive and may cause me to shoot him. You know, for God's sake, and these things have happened. So, how are you going to stop that? Because there's no way as a government you're going to understand what pisses me off about Silvery. And I'll tell you what pisses me off about Silvery. I have a long list of things. One is he never yeah. comes to work, he's always <laughs> in his house. <laughs> yeah, now again today, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and you know, I mean, like it's it's just uh, the, the the thing is just this. What annoys me about it, right, is that it's a hard problem to solve, which people are pretending is easy, right? And they I would agree. be unhappy. Okay, with the most draconian kind of solutions that might be there, right? The safest stuff is this. I'm yeah. on your side. I'm saying that the platform be free. Free expression, you have to just take it on the chin. Once yeah. you say it's a free expression, democratic sort of setup, then that's the way it is. We can't then because then we've just belied our existence if we stop the other side or things that we don't like. I mean, come on. No, and, uh, and uh, he, no matter how obviously puerile and ridiculous some things are. There, there yeah. must be frameworks for companies like this to operate in, and governments across oh, the world no, 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 have no, completely no, abdicated no, their responsibilities. The so, see, Cyrus, I'm not. I, I don't like government regulation. Do, 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 do no, you no. think I'm somebody who thinks the government regulation is a good thing? I don't. But at the same time, I acknowledge the fact that these problems around hate and stuff like that exist in Facebook, right? And, now, the mm -hmm. question is, who is the person who solves that? Do you want Mark Zuckerberg to be making choices for the entire world? Or forget Mark Zuckerberg. That's a simplistic way of it. People who work at Facebook, should they be, should they be the arbiters no. of what speech is allowed and not allowed? Or should elected governments be the arbiters there is of one other option facebook can actually play a role they test you just like how you do tests all over the world before you get your facebook credential and be allowed to upload on facebook uh and they test you for basic humanity and human yeah. humanitarian values and if you pass that test then you're allowed but it's easy to lie also in tests so if I know, but what else can you do? There, there was a really serious kind of uh, uh, point. Uh, at one point in time, it was a really serious conversation. Should you require a internet license the way you require a driving license? It's not completely out of the realm of... Uh, it's, it sounds ridiculous and immediately you'll say, how dare you? But I don't know sometimes. I'm thinking it's like democracy. Maybe we have to be trained for it. You know, but we don't value it. Uh, uh, think about uh, this, right, Cyrus? Your mom's on the internet, my mom's on the internet, right? I have had to take away all of my mom's payment capabilities through the internet because I am worried she is worried. She sees all this news coming out that old people are getting scammed, this is happening, that is happening, and I'll press something and then, like, you know, all my money will go away. She's worried about mm -hmm. this stuff. Yeah. Right. So, is it does, does it behoove us to have some sort of a basic understanding of how things generally work but then again things change so fast so who knows if that is you know this shit's going to be outdated like in weeks i don't know man these are <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't know okay let's let us not let the three of us not form a committee to solve the facebook problem here because i yeah. i think it's beyond our capacity after a point also at the end of the day it's, it's also sub subjective
So I don't know. I don't have the answer. This show has no answers. Let's be clear. You add the subjectivity into it, right? And that just turns this into an impossible problem to solve exactly without the framework. It, it, because each individual is an entity. You see, we're only yeah. thinking about religiosity and communism and uh, sexism. And uh, don't think about that. Those you could come out to an understanding for. I'm saying on the point of each individual against each individual, there is no end to that. Because I no, take and offense at, and what has upset me is not explainable to other people. You can't empathize. There is, there, there, there is a large gap, Cyrus, between what you and I might consider acceptable speech from a hate perspective and what the law permits. Right, there is a large gap between this be, between these two aspects. Right, I think it is awful for somebody to say something along the lines like such and such community has such and such things. Right, I mean, like I I might think that that might be an awful thing to say, but there is no law against it. Equally things. bad is can I friend you? That also should stop. Can I friend you? Can I send you a friend request? Especially when they ask you orally, what are you supposed to say? Who is the guy who said no? I want to see that no moment. But that know? is stop. Uh, no. No. That's me. That's yeah. me. I, I say it all the time. I say I don't use Facebook. Physical, I, in a physical, in a physical uh, confrontation, not confrontation. Yeah, I, I, I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like, sure, send me the request. I don't know that I'm going to accept it because I don't, I don't go on to Facebook all that often. I know some girls uh, who are friends of mine who tell me how men uh, ask them this at public places and you know, how they've just met and they always have to get out of that and it's always a little difficult because you don't want to be rude, but you, you're really worried. To you know, be more intimate. Like even now, though, I think this asking people if they can friend, if yeah, yeah. Send friend maybe not now. Stopped, maybe right? not now. Yeah, I don't have any okay. girlfriends now. Okay, guys, okay. I really have to rush. So, uh, is it time to say bye? But remember, there are a few days left in the week, uh, which means 2021 is yes. over. 22 is to come. Yep. Lucky for some. Yep. Okay. Adios, everybody. Have a great Monday. Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you, we need you. Send us your questions on Twitter on Cyrus Says In. Or you can email us, even if you're not female, on what Cyrus Says at gmail.com. Do you wonder why China does the things that it does? Or want to know how we could improve online privacy? Or perhaps you're thinking about how we can kickstart India's economy. If you'd like to search for the answers to such questions, check out All Things Policy, a daily public policy podcast that covers everything from employment figures to aircraft carriers. Tune in from Monday to Friday for new episodes and fresh takes. Have you ever wondered where the business world is headed? How the ways in which we create, market and sell to consumers will evolve? Or if we'll ever go back to wearing pants while working? For answers to all of this and more, tune into Advertising is Dead with me, Varun Dugirala. Every Tuesday, as I talk to entrepreneurs, leaders and change makers from across business, media, marketing and beyond, you can catch all episodes of Advertising is Dead on the IBM Podcast website, app or wherever you get your podcasts from.